Start. In our previous lectures, we are discussing about pronephros, mesonephros, and metanephros. We discussed that pronephros persists for a few weeks only, from 25 to 28 weeks. Then mesonephros comes and gives some um, contributions to the development of the urinary system, particularly the urinary system. And then metanephros forms the definitive key. We are discussing about the congenital anomalies of the kidney, and now about the congenital anomalies of the urinary bladder. Then first we are discussing about trigonitis. What is trigonitis? The trigon is the mesonephric duct derivatives. So trigon is very much sensitive to sex hormones and can undergo hormone induced epithelial metaplasia. Usually, transformation from a transitional type of epithelium to squamous type of epithelium, which can over proliferate and lead to urinary obstruction. You all know the urinary epithelium, or the epithelium of the urinary bladder is transitional type of epithelium. If a transitional epithelium transforms into squamous type of epithelium, it will produce some urinary obstruction and leading to infection of the urinary bladder, which may be called as trigonitis. And then abnormal attachment of the ureters. The ureters can sometimes be attached to either to the ureter or parts of the reproductive tract. This is one of the commonest anomalies during the embryonic life. And then uretal fistulas, sinuses, and cysts may develop in embryo. Occur while a remnant of the alum toys persist and are found in the midline along the path from the umbilical to the apex of the urinary blood. The here for the urethras, the urethral fistula with the urinary bladder, the urethras with attached to the apex of the urinary bladder, and the urethral fistula. Here, the urethral sinus, the dilatation of the urethras, which is attached to the median umbilical ligament, and the urethral cyst. Which is also attached to the median of the These are the normalities of the ureters. <laughs> and now the extrophy of the urinary bladder. Extrophy, this is the extrophy. I feel the urinary bladder is outside the body of the fetus. This is called extrophy. Abnormal position of the uh, urinary bladder outside the embryo, which is the extrophy of the urinary bladder, occurs in two per 1,000, uh, one lakh life births. Ventral body wall, this is the ventral body wall defect in which bladder mucosa is exposed. Epispedias is present. Open urinary tract extends along the dorsal aspect of the penis. Here the dorsal aspect of the penis, here you can see the epispedias. And so the urinary bladder to the umbilicus, probably due to failure of the lateral body wall force to close in the midline of the pelvic region. This is the extrophy of the urinary bladder. This is mitosis and this down. The feeling this is extrophy of the urinary bladder. This is also congenital anomaly. 
now the development of the supranormal gland as we discussed it earlier in the development of the supranormal system we are not discussing it in details some points right? development of the adrenal cortex arises mostly from the intermediate mesoderm and the trunk mineral crest cells migrate into the center of the adrenal glands and develop into the homophilic cells of the adrenal matter. These are the chromophilic cells which develop in the adrenal matter. These cells are essentially post ganglionic sympathetic neurons that release neurotransmitters like epinephrine or non epinephrine and directly into the bloodstream as opposed to innervating a target. Mm. So while the fetal cortex is being formed, cells originating in the sympathetic system, similar to your cells, invade this medial aspect, the medial aspect, where they are arranged in cords and clusters. So the clusters. So these cells give rise to the metal of the coronal gland, they stain yellow brown with chrome source and hence are called morphine cells. During embryonic life, morphine cells are scattered widely throughout the embryo, but in the adult, the only persisting group is in the metal of the glands. So this is seven week. This is the fetal cortex, and this is the medulla. Then in the eighth week, early permanent cortex appears around the fetal cortex. In 20th weeks, Juna fasciculata develops, and in the newborn, Juna fasciculata Juna glomerulosa develops one year, and in the adult, Juna reticularis, ultimately the whole of the suprarenal gland develops. So, relative size of the adrenal glands at this of state. Now, genital organs, reproductive organs. So, during the fourth and seventh weeks of development, the urinary bladder and the urethra. This is the urinary bladder. <laughs> The urinary bladder and the urethra form as the urorectal septum divides the cloacal expansion of the hindgut into the anorectal canal and primitive urogenital sinus. This is anorectal canal, and this is the urinary bladder. The urethra, the pelvic part of the urogenital sinus. This is the urogenital sinus. So here is the the urorectal septum divides the cloaca, equal the cloaca, into two parts, that is the anorectal canal, here like the anorectal canal, and the primitive or definitive urinator sinus, which is the urinator sinus. This cloaca is divided by urorectal septum during the four to seven weeks of development into anorectal canal and definitive or primary urinator sinus. So, three portions of the primitive urinal sinus that can be distinguished are the expanded superior presumptive bladder. This is the presumptive urinal bladder, a narrow neck which becomes the pelvic urethra. This is the pelvic urethra. And an inferior expanded definitive urogenital sinus. This is the definitive urogenital sinus. So, primitive urogenital sinus can be divided into three parts between the primitive urinary bladder and this is the uh, narrow neck, which becomes the pelvic urethra, and then definitive urogenital sinus. Definitive urogenital sinus, which is the main. Urinal sinus, the penile urethra. You can see here in the penile urethra, it develops into the vestibule of the case of male. The definitive urinal sinus develops in the penile urethra, and in case of female, it develops into the vestibule of the vagina. The primitive urinal sinus thus forming the mesonectric ducts and uteric parts become incorporated into the posterior wall of the presumptive blood. Prostatic and membranous urethra are incorporated. 
This is the diagram of development of the vehicle sinus with the primary bladder and the primary sinus. In the male, the definitive urogenital sinus develops in the penile rupture. The prostate gland is formed by the pathway of the urogenital sinus. The prostate gland is formed by the pathway of the urogenital sinus. So, regarding the development of gonads, the gonads begin to develop during the peak week in the genital phase. The gonads are at first undifferentiated. And then, up to the seventh weeks of intramuronic life, the gonads are undifferentiated and have only a cortex and a mantle. The type of gonad to be developed to become either female or male is determined during fertilization. In embryos with an XX chromosome or double X chromosome, the cortex normally differentiates into an ovary and the medulla regresses. But in embryos with an XY chromosome complex, it is determined by SRY chromosome. The medulla differentiates into a testis and a cortex. This is the undifferentiated gonad up to the seventh week of intramuronic life. And here it is called the bipotential gonad. This is the ureter, this is the kidney, this is the cloaca. This is mullerian duct or paramagonetic duct, and this is the ureterian duct or paramagonetic duct. <laughs> From this, if if the Y is present, self determining only the microbiome like, is present, then it develops into testes. Ultimately, it will die and Mullerian duct is degenerative in case of male. But Mullerian duct persists as the positive process. You can see in this diagram. But in case of female, if a survey is not present, then double X chromosome is. Taking upper hand, then ovary is developed. This is the obitat, this is the persistence of the Mullerian duct, uh, the obitat, the ovarian duct, uterus develops, vaginal develops, and the ovarian duct degenerates in case of female. So, on either side of the root of the dorsal mesentery, in the genital ridge, in the genital ridge which has the condensation of intermediate medulla. This is the genital ridge. This is the condensation of the intermediate medulla on either side, the root of the dorsal muscle. This is covered by silomic epithelium. Then silomic epithelium becomes the jump. By the sixth week, primordial germ cells migrate from the wall of the outside into the genital ridge. They migrate in the wall of the ridge. The gonads arise from the intermediate medulla within the genital ridge of the embryo. The genital ducts arise from the paired mesonectric and paramagnetic ducts. The mesonectric duct gives rise to the main genital duct, as we saw in the figures, and the paramagnetic ducts give rise to female genital ducts. In this figure we saw already earlier by potential bonus. This is the Ophian duct, this is the Mullerian duct. After the 70th life, and the male hormones, Mullerian inhibitory substance, testosterone, NCH3, which induces the development of the male bonus, this test is here it will be terminal vesicles, how difference develops. And if these hormones are not present, then female gonads develop bodies, vagina, arteries, uterus, obitage, these are persistent. Sex cords develop from the germinal epithelium. Sex cords grow into the melancholy of the genital ridge in both further development.
So the gunners and reproductive tracts are indifferent upon three elements we have already discussed. Differentiations will influence largely by the presence or absence of SRY. SRY means sex determination on the Y plane. SRY is present when development proceeds towards the male pathway. And if SRY is absent, then development proceeds. Along the female part, again, primitive sex force. The primitive sex force, this figure is uh, taken from the Langman symbology. This is paramagonic free touch. This is magnetic free touch. Discussed in different monad of the seventh year of electronic life. If SRY is present, then Y influence, which gives rise to. Testis gives rise to male genital pathway. Here, metal records develop, no body records, then clinical is thick. If SRI is not present, then development goes around the female pathway. The body develops, metal records degenerate, cortical cords develop, and move to the genie. This is the cortical cords of the ovary, but this is the testis. It is testis, testicular cords develop. This is the male pathway, this is the female pathway. The same figure is like the now descent of gunners. While the gunners arise in the upper number region, they are each tethered to the scrotum or the labia of a female, scrotum of female and labia of female by the guvernum. This is the guvernum. <laughs> The ligamental structure formed from the metal kind. The given film plays an important role in the descent of testes and ovaries. This is the given film. The given film plays an important role in the descent of owners. Descent of owners. The substance of the ligament of the ovary. This is the given film. Here is the image of sinus. And this is the female pathway. Here is the male pathway. This is the human 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 pathway. Under the influence of the spec determining region on the Y chromosome, the SR Y, the gonad develops into a testis containing spermatogonia, Lydic cells and sartorial cells. The Lydic cells produce testosterone. We support growth of the metonectric duct. Without testosterone, the metonectric duct decreases. You should keep in mind that testosterone, released from the lytic cell, plays an important role in the growth of metonectric duct and thus plays an important role in the development of male genital tracts. Without testosterone, metonectric duct decreases. That occurs in female. Some testosterone is converted into dihydro testosterone. Some testosterone is divided into dihydro testosterone, which supports the development of the prostate gland, penis, and gluta. So, sartorial cells produce antimalarian hormone, or antimalarial substance, or malarian inhibition substance, NIS, which induces regression of the paramagonic gland. In case of male, paramagonic gland persist. In the absence of ingredient emitting substance, the metonectric duct persists in case of female. This is the metonectric duct, the end duct. It is in different gonads, in the testes. But the metonectric duct persists in the case of female, but in the case of male, ingredient. Sorry, we can. We have to stick with triple. This is for an this is This is in the case of female. The development of the male gonad in upper reproductive tract is shown here. Orange tube is the paramagonic duct, which regresses, and green tube is the melanistic duct, which develops into the epidermis and
The development of testes directly by the testes development factor of Y chromosome, the fetus are white. Development of tunic albuginia separates the germinal epithelium from the sex cords. The primordial germ cells come to lie in the sex cords. Sex cords analyze to form seminiferous tubules in the early testes. The sum of the mesenchymal cells between the seminiferous tubules differentiate into lady cells, producing testosterone about the eight feet. The renal corpuscles will be generating, which allows the mesenchymal tubules to go after lady testes. These tubules become continuous with the mesenchymal duct to form. Some mesenchymal cells in the seminiferous tubule differentiate into sertoli cells. Testosterone promotes development of male genitalia. Some of the sertoli cells suppress the development of. This is the dot of the dynamics. This is the testes. The symptom of the testes. These are the seminiferous cords. This is parabenoplid dot. This is parabenoplid dot. This is seminiferous cords. These are the primordial jump cells. This is thick tunica albuginia. Thick tunica albuginia. So the seminiferous cords are solid until puberty, but they are made up of a large number of sorting cells. So to develop the testes fully, Puberty is required after puberty. The seminiferous cords are solid until puberty. Antimolarian hormone, this emit antimolarian antimolarian hormone secreted by certain cells inhibit paramagnetic dart, which then degenerate around the ninth week of development. This is the certain cell. This is the BD cell. This is the seminiferous cords in seminiferous cords in cross section. At the time, these are primordial germ cells. At puberty, the lumen develops into the seminiferous spores and they become seminiferous pupils. This is the vast difference between the body of the epidemic, the epidemical genius. These are the seminiferous tubules of the testes with the head of the epidemic. So, epidemic is sleeper, head of the epidemic, tail of the epidemic, this is the body of the is the so, quickly test is the lady cell, it rise to testosterone. Testosterone develops in the epidemics and pulse difference. The semidam cells dihydrosy testosterone, then we take the blood function of the with the influence of the dihydrosy testosterone. These certain cells gives rise to a image from the very name of the substance. Binds with image or MIS receptors, and for this induction, image in a double pathway does not have a It also helps in the development of the male neutral part. Testis descends from the upper lumbar region to the scrotum. By the help of new vertical intestines, you also saw in the earlier years. Third month from loin to pelvis, fourth to seventh month lies at the deep inguinal vein. Seventh month traversing the inguinal canal, eighth month at the superficial inguinal ring. Nine months to the upper part of the scrotum and reaches after birth. This is normal functioning. So it lies in the scrotal ligament in the adult remnant of the fever.
Between these two years, there may be collection, uh, collection of water, and storage, mm -hmm. and hydros. If there is any collection between the two years, logic and condition. So we want to fill up this to become the scrotum. Descent of the testes is due to gathering of the testes to the actual by the gluon. With growth and elongation of the embryo, associated with shortening of the gluon of the the testes are pulled through the body wall, renal canal, and finally into the scrotum to maintain the cooler atmosphere outside body. The carry bar develops into the cuts, gives the icon of the carry bar. The sinus gives rise to the uh, irregular except the trigon. Trigon develops from the mesonuclear duct, but the remaining of the irregular develops from the irregular sinus. Prostate, mouth urethral glands, which are also developed from the sinus. The <laughs> And that is difference between the appendix of the appendix, appendix, appendix and this is the appendix of the testes of the testes. This testicular cord is the testes, 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 this paradigm, the testes, the paradigm, the bladder, and you the trigon, prostate gland, or the retro gland. What are the congenital abnormalities of testes? There may be undescended testes. That is, the testes may lie any higher in the pelvis or in the abdomen. So, in fifteen percent of the testes may lie in the abdominal. Region 25 percent cases in lying in renal canal, 16 percent high scrotal. So, if there is a scrotum, there may be a chance of death. So, if the sum because in undescended. In the scrotum and ectopic testes. It is abnormal position of the testes. Uh, the testes is present in the scrotum, but other tests present on others. Absence of Y chromosome. Scores break up into small clusters, each of which surrounds a germ cell forming a primordial follicle. Medulla and cortex are differentiated. 
follicles occupy the thorax. Division of jumpsel and formation of primordial follicles occur before birth. The ovaries initially migrate further in the similar fishing to the testes from their origin on the floor, but they do not travel as far like the testes, reaching their final position just within the tree level. The gilvernaculum becomes the ovarian ligament and brown ligament. This is the development of ovaries. Now, reproductive organs, two pairs of genital ducts develop in both sexes. We already saw the mesonectric or rubrian duct and the paramesonectric or rubrian duct. Paramesonectric ducts develop next to mesonectric duct in the history of the world. This is the mesonectric, this is the mesonectric, this is the mesonectric duct, this is the paramesonectric duct. This is paramesonectric. The caudal ends of the paramedonectric duct used to form a uterine medial canal in both sexes. The cranial ends of the ducts open into the future reproductive cavity. In female embryos, mesonectric duct vigorous and paramagonectric ducts develop into uterine tubes, uterus and upper with the paramagonectric duct, the paramagonectric duct. So what we discuss here in female embryos, mesonectric ducts exist. Mesonectric ducts exist in case so of female. And paramagnetic now developed into its own tubes, features, In the absence of survival, it is self determining region in the life. The gonad develops into an ovary with gonia and stromal cells. Since no testosterone is produced, the magnetic ducts appear. Magnetic ducts weakness in case of female due to absence of testosterone. Same, there is also no mullerian inhibitor substance. The paramagnetic persist in case of female. <laughs> this gives rise to the ovidarts, uterus, and upper one. The urinal finals contribute to the formation of the barbourotron glands and the lower two third of the. So, the pair being the single body of the uterus used to develop. So the body of the uterus is developing by the fusion of the two paramagnetic and the paramagnetic ducts remain separate laterally where they form the uterine tubes or fallopian tubes. These are the fallopian tubes. These are the fallopian tubes. So the development of the lower female reproductive tract is shown here. The uterus surface and upper one part of the brain. Are derived from the paramagnetic the vagina, derived from the paramagnetic <laughs> And the lower two thirds of the vagina, how do you have glands and distributes are derived from the evolution of the sign? This is the paramagnetic gap. So, paramagnetic gap rise to natural surface and upper one part of the vagina. And the lower two thirds of the vagina develops from the urethral cycle. The urethral So, embryonic origin of the vagina has been uh, historically hotly debated. There is some debate in relation to the development of the vagina with several different contributions. Someone says, Vaginal cords proliferate from the lower end of the uterus vaginal canal, or which is mesodermal in origin. Yeah. Vaginal cord and the sign of vaginal valves from the mullerian tubercle, which is 
endodermal, vaginal cords, and the sinovaginal valves joint to form the vaginal plate. In the vaginal plate, the vaginal plate canalizes to form. See here is the canal. Vaginal plate canalizes, canalizes to form the vagina. Near its lower end, a thin partition remains for some time. Thin partition that persists in the vagina. So upper part is mesodermal and lower part is mesodermal. But current molecular studies show the whole vagina with more morphogenic protein for being before reshaping the intermediate mesoderm derived gradient end up into the vagina. So, in case of female, ureteric blood gives rise to the ureter, mesonephric ducts, trigon of the ureteric blood, paramesonephric ducts give rise to the ovi duct, it fills upper one third of the vagina, urogenital sinus gives rise to the ureteric blood of trigon, malpoiluctual glands, ureteric and not the vagina. In the urogenital sinus, the main sector, main tube of the Looking to in the border tip of the paramedic plate duct, tissue of the vaginal valves is from the vaginal plate. In the surface of the uterus, one is the vaginal vagina. So in case of male, the mesonephric duct system remains to form apparent opportunities of the testis, epididymis, was difference, and the ability to be duct. We all will be saw so in earlier figures, the seminal vesicle develops as a diverticulum from the developing bulk currents. The paramesonephric system regresses except the prostatic utricle on the seminal follicles and appendix of the chest. In female, most of the mesonephric duct disappear. It gives rise to the trigon of the urinary bladder. So, in case of female, the trigon of the urinary bladder is developed from the in return, trying the bladder connected for the kidney, it will flow and this is genital tubercle and tubercle holes. Genital tubercle, in case of pain, it gives rise to the pelvis, glands of the penis. Glands of the penis. In the vaginal fold fuse, you have some group. Penile urethra and uterus veins fill the above the urethral group to form the sperm. In the general congenital means of the uterus, the bicondoids, there may be hypoplasia or agenesis, general plasia, plasia, and then tumor may be involved. Unicornoid uterus, it is communicating, communicating. This is the ideal cause. This is my communication. This is the my communication. Another septate uterus, which is complete separation here, complete septation. This is partial septation. This is the arcuate uterus. It does not here. So, external genital genital tubercle develops ventral cervical membrane in fourth three. Genital tubercle elongates to form a cellus with a virtual group on its ventral surface. Formation of the bilateral unilateral folds and labial models. So, this is the genital tubercle. In this cellus, this is the cellus. Elongated folds. This is the elongated folds. We have to take the cellus. This is the fact. The foreskin of the uterine uh, penis. And the foreskin, or what is called is that stipules. This is this of the penis. The foreskin is formed in the fourth week of development. The septum of the sudan moves inward around the edges of the penis and then press down, leaving a thin layer of skin around the penis. The thin layer of skin in the penis. During this time, the penis also develops its corpus cavernosa and changes from proliferating the time within the genital. 
So proliferation of mesoderm and ectoderm around the vertebral membrane produces primordial tissues of the external bacteria and Later tubercles, inter folds, and inter folds. The primordia are indistinguishable until both. Intimate testosterone promotes elongation of the phallus into the penis. And the urethral or urogenital folds fails to form the penile urethral. Levioscotal swelling fails to form the scrotum. This is in. Different stage of the seven weeks and then the colors in case of male, they don't fold either in different field and from this, we have the glands penis, urethral group, one of the urethral group, the letter scrotum, and the uh, and late features, so we have enough scrotum, we have the scrotum repeat, we have the clinic urethral. And if this not happen, we have the male dental tracts. So testosterone promotes the elongation of the phallus into the penis. The phallus, elongation of the phallus, the of the penis. or urethral folds fix to form the fifth penis. Due to fusion of the urogenital folds and like this, the system for And in case of female, male this is and urogenital and legislative solutions do not fuse in the midline, they develop into the labia minora and labia major. This is labia major, labia major. And in case of male, urogenital folds fuse to form the in case of female, they do not fuse to form the labial major. So in male, the primordia differentiate as follows: genital tubercle gives rise to body and glands of the penis for cavernous cells. Genital swelling gives rise to scrotum and scrotal lapis. Female, genital tubercle gives rise to body and glands of the parietalis. Genital folds gives rise to labia minor, and genital swelling gives rise to labia major. Congenital anomaly: hypospadias. Failure. Of the fusion of urethral or urogenital folds and try and lead to hypospadias. These are the several varieties of epithelia. This is sub corona, the corona, the middle of the corona. This is meat shaped, shaped of the penis. The urethral opening here. This is penoscopia. The junction of the penis with the scrotum. Here the urethral or in these cases, the pupil should not be um, incised. The foreskin of the pupils should be kept for this requirement of this epispedius. Epispedius, this is epispedius, urethral opening. It's faulted. The failure of the fusion of the urethral or urethral folds dorsally lead to epispedius. Urethral opening is dorsally. Now, ambiguous genitalia, ambiguous genitalia and intersexuality. Some types of birth defect where the outer genitals do not have the typical appearance of either a male or a female. Ambiguous genitalia in genetic female, babies with double X chromosomes have the following features and enlarged clitoris that has the appearance of a small penis. Urethral opening can be anywhere along, above, or below the surface of the clitoris. The labia may be fused within the labia. 
separated in individuals. Okay. Here, let me be few. You can only like this. Slowdown. The infant may be not to be a male with transition in testicles. Sometimes a lump of this uh, tissue is felt within. In the fused labia, but the making it look like a scrotum with testicles. Ambiguous genitalia in a genetic male, extra chromosome, include the following features a small penis, less than 2 to 3 centimeters, that you can grow in large clitoris, and clitoris is only one for male, and normally enlarged part. My urethral opening may be any higher. Along, above, or below the penis, it can be plain with a low on the territory, and then making the infant appear to be female. Cross scrotum with some degree of separation resembling labia, and disinfect testicles commonly accompany and become labia. So, development of molars on either side of the root of the dorsal mesentery is the genital ridge, which has the condensation of the medial mesodum covered by cylindric epithelium. Epithelium epithelium becomes germinal epithelium, but the six feet primordial germ cells migrate from the wall of the yoke cell. Reach. So, here in the development of the different monads, this is still just still development over in development. Discussion. Male mesonephric duct, the European duct forms different ductules, so the diamine is borrowed different and the regulatory duct. If a female paramesonephric duct, Develops into uterine tubes, uterus, and now. We should keep in mind these things. During development, the external genitalia are identical in both sexes up to the external genitalia develops from genital tuber folds, leading guys to fellows, urethral folds, and medicinal folds. In case of male, genital tuber folds become the penis. Urethral folds fuse to form urethra, fused labial fold becomes scrotum. Male genital tuber fold becomes the clitoris. Urethral folds remain separated as the labia. Unfused labial scrotal fold becomes labia medica. Now, differences of sex differentiation DLT in the RMS. Intersex disorders. Intersex disorders are sometimes we call it harmonization. Associated with gonadal dysgenesis, associated with underrealization of the 46 XO individuals, realization of 46 X Turner syndrome and Blindfelter syndrome, as well as desert dysorthy and poly. Compensation are associated with ambiguous genitalia, we already discussed in earlier slides. However, a few may present with delayed period. Or primary and unknown. So, 46 XYDSD persists in Mullerian duct syndrome. This is found in genetic male with mutations in Mullerian individual substance or in the myosis receptor. Because of testosterone and dihydrocytostosterone production, there are normal male external. Genitalia and male genitalia. This is 46 XYD. Okay, because there is effectively in patient, the paramagnetic duct persists, that is, there is a small uterus and pure alluvial tubes. The test is made, but in the normal position for both this, we want this for one into the scrotum. This is 46 XYD. Persistent Mullerian and duct syndrome. And 46 XYDSD, that is androgen insensitivity, the uh, figure is present in your Langan syndrome. It is testicular feminization syndrome. It occurs in genetic males with mutations in the androgen receptor. Lack of realization of due to inability of androgen receptor to bind testosterone or that. Testosterone. XY sex reversal with relatively normal female external genitalia but on this injectors. Mesonephric darts are rudimentary or lacking. 
between some sensitivity to test stuff. And normal production of the MIS, Mullerian inhibitory substance, from the certain cells causes Mullerian duct degradation. So, no V ducts, uterus, and upper one part of the technique in sensitivity. What is the 5 alpha reductase efficiency of the mutations in 5 alpha reductase as to dihydro testosterone? External genitalia are partially virulent ducts are intact, means they only require testosterone. Normal production of MIS from the certain cells causes paramagnetic duct degradation. And 46 excess DSD, it is masculinized external genitalia due to congenital adrenal. It can persist as the DSD in genetic females due to defects in 21 hydrophilia essential for the cortical synthesis. Lack of feedback in pituitary causes overproduction of adrenocortical tropic hormone or SH and overactivity of the adrenal gland. Increased production of weak androgenic hormones from the adrenal gland cannot make cortisol. Or aldosterone, but can make androgens such as androgen stimidion, and also weak virilization of the external genital. Here, there is enlarged cyclones, partial or complete fusion of labia minor. Internal genitalia are male. No testes absent, as they are in the survey. No mesonephric ducts, no testosterone to support their development. No MIS, so the Mullerian duct. Structures which is the uterus and the middle tract. In genetic male, that is 46 XY, in normal male, normal male can also present with congenital adrenal hyperplasia. To keep it in mind that the normal genetic male also present with congenital adrenal. In these cases, then the videos are already utilized by testosterone produced by the testes. So they would not usually also present with the DMT. However, as their adrenal glands cannot make cortisol, the male this here is the glands of the clitoris. This is the clitoris, the scrotal graphy with the scrotum, with the labia. We are to the scrotum, labia major, labia, labia major, and the perineal graphy, the perineal perianal tissues, including the stomach and the non sphincter muscle. Structures in detail. So, embryonic structure in different gonad uh, in male to testis in female ovary, cortex, many polypus, adult, rigid testis, rigid ovary, vivernoculum, vivernoculum testis, ovarian and down wave of the uterus in case of female, but different, different ductules in case of female, mother, and protein peripherum. Mesonephric dark in case of male, it rise to appendix of the epididymis. Elysius and Carcini, the military dart and seminal vesicles. As an effect that in the female gives rise to Dix, Sigmosa, duct of the epifuron, duct of Gartner, ureter, pelvis, Elysius, and Titan tubules. When a mesonephric duct gives rise to appendix of testes in case of male, additive of Morgagni, uterine tube, and uterus in case of female. The urogenital sinus gives rise to the urinary bladder, ureter, prostatic, or prostatic ventricle. Prostate gland and vulvoretral glands in male, urinary bladder, urethral, vaginal, urethral, paraurethral, and greater vestibular glands in case of female. Sinus tubercle gives rise to seminal colliculus in case of male, and hymen in case of female, pelos, regulus into penis in male, and pelos, regulus into clitoris in case of female. Urogenital folds gives rise to ventral aspect of the penis and labia minor, labia minor in case of female. And labiscrotal swellings gives rise to scrotum in male and labia majora in male. You just memorize these things, these three. So here is the end. Now, thank you for your patient hearing. Now, you can audit us. So thank you all.
Thank <laughs> you.